There are moments that are forever frozen in time, tucked into a memory bank, a vault that can be unlocked only by the participants. They select memories. The foundation wrapped in truth, tainted by years and perhaps perspective. In Arlington, South Dakota, there lives such a tale. It has been carried on by a group that now lives across the country because most have moved on. But any time they want to revisit it, it warms the souls, it brings smiles. It reminds one that there are perfect times when things really do work out. The way you dreamed of them as a kid. In 1968, there was one such basketball team. A team that had been growing up together. A team that would bring a community together and reach heights it had not seen. That dream started the year prior. What had happened the year before, uh, we had gone to the state tournament and after watching the first round sessions, we were standing in the hallway of the arena and we said, we can play with these guys. We're as good as these guys and we can beat a lot of these guys. And so we dedicated ourselves on that day to getting it done the next year. The next season started with a coach, a new coach who had inherited a basketball treasure chest. The first official day of practice, I walked out on that court and they were shooting around and I looked and watched for about 10 minutes and I thought, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is something else. His job was to make sure the train he had jumped on kept running, that he didn't overcoach, that he understood that they already understood their potential. I just had this sense that the guy really knew what he had and, he, and how to handle this group that was fairly well Ready. Ready. Yeah. What was the mental attitude that they had? They had a, we played together since fourth grade and we think we can uh, have a real good year and maybe win the tournament and they told uh, Bill and I that. They told you that and he said here's what you're doing for boys, they, they we want to win this thing and we think we can. Yes. And so began a mission, one that everyone understood but no one realized how rich the reward. It started with adversity. Rich Andrew Jeske, one of the star players, went home one night and found his biggest fan, his father, in a bad state. It's the first time he'd been able to communicate pretty much. He'd been in a coma pretty much all week. And he looked at my mom and he said, uh, um, and he made like he was shooting a basketball, and he said, you've got a game tomorrow night, don't you? And I said, yeah, I do. And he looked at my mom and he said, these kids are going to surprise you this year. And that's, he said goodbye to us and he died the next morning. We never saw him again. And uh, so I played Tuesday night and then he was buried on Friday. I played Friday night and we won both games. We tried to be as positive and uplifting and helpful to him as we possibly, as we possibly could. It was not talked about often during the season, but it was part of the backdrop that was seeded with inspiration and a competitive passion. As the season took shape, it was obvious. This was not just a very good team, it was a show. Filling up gymnasiums and creating a buzz that took over the town. I can remember during the season, we got free meals from different businesses in town would, would buy a supper and we'd get to go down to the city cafe or the, the Blue Mist back on the edge of town and we got free meals all the time. It was amazing. What was building was a buzz. People knew that this team was the one to watch in the area. Almost undefeated during the season, a fact not lost on anyone. After beating arch rival Volga twice early on. And then came back and they beat us. And we got to this district tournament and we beat them by 20 points. <laughs> that was a fuel and a distant memory as they rolled through the sections, avenging the loss and finally arriving at the pinnacle earning a spot as an entrant in the state tournament in Sioux Falls. You know, I always think about that movie, The Hoosiers. That was us. We walked in the door to the, the Sioux Falls Arena. I mean, this building was bigger than anything we got in this whole town. And our first objective, as simple as this may sound, was to win our first game so we could play on TV. Because we needed a lot of fans in Arlington here that wanted to see us play. So there's the end of the ball game as the Arlington Cardinals advance in the State Beach Tournament. What the state was now able to witness was what this team had known for a long time. They had something special. You know, we were fearless. We pushed the ball in an ongoing way, and uh, the work 
that went into it was not work at all. It was just pure fun and the relationships I mean, uh, we were really close friends. Harmel and Andrzejewski look especially good today, I thought. They... Well, they look good in this Paul Parker, I'll tell you, for a sophomore. He's quite a ball player. Yes, he is. To win it, they would have to go through Oneida. Here's the tip. No small task. A packed arena would witness a game filled with future college standouts. Get back close. Side shot, Harmel, 12-footer, good. They win at each other for four quarters. Parker, Parker drives in the lane, shovels off, Harmel, a short one, good. And there were very few that could defend a front line of Harmel, Andrew Jeske, and Tolzien. It was really a matter of me being in the right place at the right time, and, and how fortunate for me to be with people, people like that. One second, it's all over. Arlington was as special as advertised. Just one win now separated the Cardinals in destiny. Parker stood on the other side. We were ranked number two, Parker was number one, and um, when we got to the ball game, I didn't realize the impact that would have until we did the cheer all for Arlington, stand up and holler. Everybody in the Sioux Falls Arena, except the Parker section, were standing up and hollering. It was what had been talked about for months, the dream matchup come true. These are ball clubs that have five real fine ball players. Uh, the arena announcer said, this is the game we've all been waiting for. And it, I mean, that, that doesn't get your juices flowing. <laughs> I, I don't know what will get your juices flowing. What would play out was what had been set in motion years before this day. Arlington had too much. And look at those boys from Arlington. They are happy. They're spinning each other around. And Arlington before a capacity crowd of 9,000 plus wins the state championship. Other than getting married or, you know, having my first baby or something was pretty big, but I mean, it was just a real big experience for, you know, a small town kid from the state of South Dakota to be able to say, yeah, we did that. What followed was an exclamation point that almost surpassed the game. The team would travel back. What they did not know was what awaited them. It was something that, that will never happen again in my life, that, that feeling of really um, doing something that people really appreciated and really got behind and, and supported so much. It was wonderful. When you came over the hill and could see cars parked back west as far as you could see, it just blew your mind. And then when we get to town, and my goodness, this gym was absolutely jam-packed. It was something else. Those kids just... Yes, these kids brought the town together. And for one winter, they were the toast. They were the state champions. And for the rest of their lives, they will wear that badge with honor. It's, it's a fairy tale. It's kind of one of those things you dream about as a kid. And, uh, and it happens to you, and you've got to pinch yourself even now. At my age, pinch myself. Yeah, it really did happen. So the team from 1968 gets together for one special day, and then they take a very special trip. They go down to the auditorium where they used to play, where they accomplished so much together, and they sit around and they watch the old games, the old state tournament footage. And man, do the memories come flooding back. Arlington wins the state championship. Since they decided to put this day together, there has been anticipation. 45 years and much of Arlington looks the same. A small town, close-knit, and that feel remains. For some, it's been years since they have talked. But they've lived in each other's memories and hearts ever since. So on this day, they gather at a local restaurant. The feeling of long-lost friends was immediate. Oh, it's so good to see you. Uh, yeah, now see I you. see that. Now I see the face. Now I remember. See, now see. I remember. Oh, they've changed in appearance, but it's also as if time has stood still. You're looking great. There is something exhilarating about rekindling all that was good, a break from life's everyday stress, a time to remember the face that made life good at one time, and a spirit that only they can understand. We had, a we had a great run, old buddy, though, didn't we? We did. They will grab a bite to eat. Schmidt's restaurant has taken some liberties, and a scrapbook on hand brings back even more memories. How long have you been since you'd seen some of these guys? Oh, some of them have been uh, 25, 30 years, probably. 
the good part about that is uh, it's as if we saw them last week. As they gather for lunch, it is obvious how much this group meant to each other, how much they still mean to each other. Uh, just warmth, you know, uh, and the camaraderie is still there. I guess that's one of the ways you know you're in a great friendship is uh, when you sit down with somebody 45 years later and it's still there. That was the hardware store. I went over to the bank. Yeah, now it's an antique. After lunch, they depart and walk the familiar streets of Arlington, stopping at a local shop where they are waiting for them. Wow, that's sweet. Ah, oh, Julie, thanks. <laughs> They're on their way to a special building, the one that used to, in winter months, be a home away from home. It is the place where they played their games, since converted, but still with the basketball feel and ambiance. For most, it's been decades since they darkened these doors. Now, who are these guys here? That's Kurt Hopchild. It is interesting to follow these people since they grew up here. Most have gone on to successful careers since 1968. The vast majority of these guys have been very successful. And, uh, and it is because of that team learning experience. They are here not just to take another look, to smell the smells, feel the feel. There is a bonus. They have found and converted some of the films of their state tournament games and will play them on the big screen. For most, it is the first time they have seen this footage since they played that march. They gather around with anticipation. The warmth exudes. It is a good feeling to be here with these people again. Yeah, even if you haven't seen these guys in years, it's as soon as we get back together, we're the old team. Rebound is grabbed by Hofchild of Arlington. They settle in and let the tape roll, let the memories come flooding back. What is that offense we're trying to execute? <laughs> Pass and shoot? As you watch Paul Harmel and Rich Andrzejewski sit side by side, you are again reminded of what was. Two prime time players with the same goal. We challenged one another to get better. And uh, it, there was no animosity amongst the two of us. Uh, I was happy for him and he was happy for me, but the big thing was we wanted to win. It, it's, it was kind of an oddity is the fact that we had ex exchanged yearbooks uh, before his senior year. And if you looked at the yearbook, what he wrote in mine and what I wrote in his was exactly the same thing. Who was it? Let's win this thing. We were the best thing that happened to each other because we competed. Carmel's going all the way on the dribble to the north end. Now to Andrew Jeske, his shot rim. We were the same size, the same everything, so we competed hard with each other, but that's what made us better. I mean, you know, had you not had somebody like that to push you, I'm not, I'm not sure either one of us would have, would have gotten to where we were. Andrew Jeske breaking through the lane and cutting to the end line, back out to Harmel. Harmel to the end line, fires from 14 feet oh, away. Hey, getting hot. You're getting hot. <laughs> they observe and take in and feel that sense of team again. I, you know, I never got to play any. Um, when you got when you got guys like Andrew Jeske, Harmel, and uh, Parker, you can't compete against guys like that when you're as small as I was, and and I wasn't that good. I was just good enough to make the team. To be so, part of that team, and you know, I was just part, of it, and I'm proud to be part of the team. To Andrew Jeske, his drive shot. Boy, did you see that one fall off? That kid can do everything. He missed it, but it would have been a cross had he done it. There's Steve You can see it on their faces on this day. They have returned to their youth. It was like being back in high school again, you know, and it, it just that uh, kind of thrill in your stomach, that kind of kind of uh, high, living this incredible fairy tale. Back out it goes, top of the circle, H. Hopchild, fake drive, shoot, score. Hey, did you see that move? Oh, oh. Got again. <laughs> comes to Hopchild on the left, bounces off one of these, Kurt Peterson, good. That was truly awesome. Brought back a lot of memories. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. On Arlington, and that's all for Paul Harnell. He goes out of the ball game with five fouls, and what a game he has played. 27 points for Paul Harbell. You wonder what is going through each mind as they take it in. Maybe a little different story in each person, but a feeling in everyone's body that is much the same. It's, it's kind of brings back a lot of old memories. It was, it was an amazing experience, I think, winning the State B Championship. Peterson has it. Four seconds. 
three seconds, one second, it's all over. over, they again are moved to embrace a perfect day, reliving a near perfect season. How appropriate is it that they finish off this day, this reunion, this get together with a trip to the new high school? For what else? A high school basketball game. The team walked from the auditorium they used to call home to the more modern facility that is now part of Arlington's high school. And on this night, there is anticipation. The folks in town have come to honor a team that put them on the map 45 years earlier. A lot of people here that normally you don't see just because the 68 team is here. What's it mean to honor them tonight for oh, you? It's a great honor. Those people have, some of them have come back individually at different times, but to have the whole team here is an amazing night. What is also apparent is that they are role models to this town, not just because of a state championship, but because of the lives that evolved since that time, successful in a number of ways. If you're successful in a particularly a team sport, uh, I mean, not only do you have to push yourself and, and work hard and all that work ethic stuff, but you have to, you know, you have to be compatible with other people. And now for the home team, the Arlington Cardinals. On this night, they are to watch a scrappy Cardinal team that has played well all season. It seems the spirit is still alive in this community. You can't beat a cold night, a warm gym, and a good basketball team. There is one more accolade that has been saved for this game at halftime. They will take the court as a team one more time. They had a first year head coach, and they knew they had a chance to be pretty good. It turned out they were better than pretty good. They were the state champions. and they take the court together as teammates again. Resides in Colorado Springs, Colorado, Paul Parker. They are again reminded of what was. It, it was unbelievable, unbelievable. I was so very fortunate. They saved the big two for the finale. Forever connected. Paul and Andy in the arena again. We knew we were going to be pretty good. And we really, we've been, a lot of us have been playing together since we were little kids. And we really bonded and, and we were really uh, truly brothers. I thank God for the privilege of coaching these gentlemen. Thank you. As a nice touch, they high-five the current players as they walk off the court. And in a strange twist of what seemed like fate, the Arlington Cardinals go down to the wire and find a way to win. The end to a perfect day, a perfect night. As they say goodbye, really nothing needs to be said. They know, know what each of these people mean in their lives know what this journey was all about? And you wonder, what would Andy's dad have said about this team if he had been there to see that magical season? Oh, he, he would have been beside himself. He, you know, he would have, he would have, uh, you know, he'd, he'd have smiled and he'd, he'd said, good job, son. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch, photography for a lifetime.